What's going on YouTube family? It's Ben here with VW Family Farm and I know there's some new subs out there that have asked about our greenhouse. Right here is my greenhouse. I got it from a friend of mine, Randy. He has a website. It's uh, completegreenhouse.com or he's also got a YouTube channel, Greenhouse Solutions. Check him out. This thing comes as a kit. You can order it and him set it up, but he prefers you order the kit and put it up yourself. It's simple. We done it in just a few hours one day and it's actually a piece of cake. So let's go look at this. Oh wow. That, uh, that wasn't like that when I left. We just got back from California from the Baker Creek Heirloom Expo and my papaya tree has fallen over. One thing about this is they grow 100% in gravel. There's no dirt in this whatsoever. You can see the root wad is not very big, but that's fine. Good thing about it, it's still green. My papaya still look good. Let me stand this thing up real quick and see if we can save this tree. All right, let me unplug the fan so it's not so loud in here. Maybe that'll make it a little more tolerable. All right, I'm going to use some paracord and go over the frame of this, and hold, that way it'll help hold this tree up. Just scrape some of these rocks back to get that root wad back down in the water. I don't know, I've never had this happen, so this is all going to be new to me. I think I'm going to take another one from the center pole. Whoo! Started getting a little toasty in here. Uh huh. 107 degrees. So we're not going to be able to stay in here long, but hopefully that right there fixes that. Okay, let's get back to what we came in here for. We've had some questions about our, uh, our setup in our greenhouse. So we'll start from the beginning. This thing comes as a kit, easy to assemble. You drive your, your post into the ground, and then these bows, they just sit down in it. It's easy to put up. I do have a video on it. It's actually when we first started YouTube, and not that great of a video, but there is one out there of us assembling it. Uh, the way this thing works, it's got two layers of plastic. You got one here and one farther on up there where you see that shade cloth. And then you've got a fan that's all the time running. It's a small fan. I think it draws like half of an amp or something like that. It's pulling air from in here, blows it in between the two layers of plastic, which inflates it, keeps it tight. And then also that's a layer of insulation. So it's pulling the warm air out of here, putting it in between the layers in the winter time. That's like a, a layer of insulation in between. And then from the greenhouse part, we've also got aquaponics set up. Right here is the fish tank. I've got tilapia in here and they're trying to get my hand through the, through the side. I feel that. But we grow tilapia in here and that feeds the system. Their fish waste comes out of the bottom of this tank right down here. It goes in to the bottom of this tank which I'll pull the top off of it. I'm going to pull this trash bag off. This is what I keep the sunlight from just steadily shining in there and growing algae or whatnot. But in here I've got, I've got an aerator in here, but I've also got all kinds of material in here 
to grow microorganisms that break down the fish poop. I've got filters in here. I've actually got an old shade cloth in there. Just things that they can attach to and sit there and break down the fish poop. That fish poop water comes in from the bottom, goes through the filtration, breaks down, and then it goes out. This line right here comes out the side of it. You follow the header down. It hits a T here, which on all the beds does the same thing. It goes down this header, runs all the way down to the end down there, runs all the way down, and this runs off head pressure, and then runs out this end, all off the of head pressure because that fish tank and the filtration tank set up higher than my grow beds. Well, each one of these grow beds is filled with rock, and I've sat there and I've washed all the dust particles and everything out of them before I put them in here, cleaned all the rock, layered the rock in there, and then I sit here and let the system run and before I put fish in it for about two to three weeks. Then you put fish in there and get all that started for about another two weeks, and then start putting your plants in here. You can start, but they don't grow as well. You've got to get all your, your nutrient levels and everything balanced out right. But in that, the water, of course, it's coming in behind this basil plant. And it runs all the way down this grow bed because I've got it on an angle. Runs all the way down to that end. Boy, does this lettuce not look delicious. We actually need to harvest quite a bit of this and start eating it pretty soon. Comes through the amaranth, through the kale, and then gets down here on this end, and I've got a hole with a bulkhead fitting in the bottom of this. Of course, this is just two by six with a layer of uh, OBS board on the bottom of it, and then I got this material from the greenhouse guy. It, you drill a hole through it, put that bulkhead fitting through it, and your water drains out that. Once it drains out the bottom of that, it comes down this header. And remember, we're still on this header here. This one here is the water coming in. This is the water that's leaving the beds. It runs all the way around the room and then comes back into my sump tank. This is the only tank in here that has a pump on it. So I'm pumping the water out of the sump tank. Let's see, back up over there, and it goes back into the fish tank. This right here is just an automatic fill. It's got a, it's got a float inside there that keeps the water level up. So right here, we're pumping out of the sump tank back into the fish tank. Now you might be asking, what is this line here? This is an overfill line. In case something happens, something stops up or whatever, all the water that's coming out of the sump tank, fish are trying to get my finger, can drain back right there. It will drain back into the sump tank. That way, if, if not enough water is coming out of the fish tank that's supplying the beds, extra is going back into the sump tank. So every one of these grow beds are set up exactly the same. You can see the headers on this one, the header on that one. Every one of them flow down to the end, come all the way back down and drain out. So what all do we grow in here? Of course, like I showed you all ago, we've got the basil, we've got lettuce, amaranth, kale, that's a vining spinach. I've got thyme, more of my lettuce, that's the mere lettuce. Over there I've got marjoram, an experimental tomato plant that I'm playing around with to see how it does in the heat. Yes, some parts of it aren't doing that great. I've grown bok choy in here and that's what that's from is just a seed that had fell earlier in the spring just now germinated, got down to the water or whatever when I pulled the huge tomato plant that I had right here. I mean, this thing was massive. It was going all the way to the ceiling. Okay, on this side, of course, you've seen the papaya tree. 
We are so excited. This is our first papaya. But other than that, looky there. Move the leaves out of the way. There's four more papayas right there. Well, I hope something does not happen to that. This right here was all taken over in chocolate mint. I've ripped all of it out and I thought I had it all gone and come back in here and lo and behold, we have a straggler that's surviving. Well, no, we got a few stragglers that are surviving. All right, we'll move on down. If you're not familiar with me, we love to experiment. This is a grow bag filled with perlite and I've sprinkled carrots in there, carrot seeds in there, and they have all germinated. Looks like I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of thinning. Another experimental tomato plant. Of course, down in mixed in there, we've got lettuce. One thing Andrea really wanted when we built this greenhouse, which I had another one before, it just never functioned the way this one did. This thing is awesome. Uh, she wanted lettuce year round, because as you know, you can't preserve lettuce, so. That's why the majority of this greenhouse is gonna be planted in lettuce or some, some sort of green. Also want tomatoes to go with our salads during the winter. That's what the vining spinach, I mean, look at all that right there. Just different things to make a salad. And that's what this, the main purpose of this greenhouse is for, except for our lemon tree and our papaya tree. We've got our first lemon here. It has been doing good. We've kept an eye on it all summer long. Hopefully next year we'll have several, several more lemons. Let's see, what else do we got in here? Let me go over here to this side. I'll go out to my rosemary bush outside and I'll clip off a few clippings of that and just bring them in here and stick them in the water. They go crazy. This is another experimental grow bag with carrots in it. I've got a bad habit of just throwing, like taking a bite of the tomato or eating most of it. I'll throw it down, just see what it does. More, more tomato sprouts. Don't even remember what they are. Here's more lettuce. All right, this right here, there's a prime example right there. This is a bell pepper I got from Baker Creek when I went up there to visit them thing is amazing in taste let me see it was called a it was a lisa l-e-s-y-a if that's how you pronounce it that's how i'm going to pronounce it anyway i brought it in here threw some seeds down and they're just steadily germinating look at here one two three four five six seven of them right there oh no there's another one there's number eight Yes, I will have to thin them out. I'm not gonna let all of them grow there, but just seeing what seeds germinated. This here is a bell pepper that's been growing in here for pretty much since we put it up. So about a year and a half, close to two years. King of the North, bell pepper. And we've just kind of let them go to waste. We have got so many bell peppers coming out of the garden right now that we don't even need them, but they're a nice additive in our salad during the winter. So I will keep them going at least till these leases start producing because they were absolutely amazing. I've also had people ask how I heat and cool this thing. Let me spin around here. Of course, we've got our exhaust fan. It's run off the thermostat. When it gets 85 degrees in here, that fan kicks on and starts pulling air through. Let's spin back around here to the other side. Right here is a swamp cooler I built. I got a video on that. We'll link that in here. They're, they're simple to build. I do not have it running at this moment. I need to get it hooked back up. But we're pulling air through that out the exhaust fan. That's for cooling. I've also got a shade cloth on the top that helps keep it cooler. Now during the winter, I've just got that propane heater. One thing I had a problem with this last year was my insulation here is not quite thick enough, so that is on my agenda to do before winter this year. I am going to really, really insulate that wall really heavily. That is our north-facing wall, and we are fixing to make it fully insulated. 
Whew. So I gotta get out of here. It is burning up in here. Plug this fan back in real quick. Now just in those just in those few minutes it went from 107 to 112. So let that cool off in there for a little while. Alright, I've had questions on how all that works. The easiest way to explain it is I am feeding those plants with fish food. That is using the fish to break down the fish food, which comes out in, in rich ammonium waste. And then that biofilter breaks down the fish poo with living bacteria in there that converts it to nitrites, nitrates, this and that. The plants, they can use that converted nitrates as nutrients. Um, that's just another way of saying it's fertilizer. Uh, fish emulsions, things like that, that's all fertilizer. So basically doing the same thing and then the roots of the plants that ends up filtering out all the waste so that what's returning to the fish from the grow beds is all filtered through the rocks through the roots and all the bacteria breaking everything down so real easily in a nutshell that's how the whole system works of course you can google it and find out bukus and bukus of information on it and there is all different sizes of aquaponic systems uh, all aquaponics is is hydroponics using fish so that's how our greenhouse works it's really pretty simple once you get uh, putting it all together or once you've got it all put together it's really simple and the fish and the plants take care of it all all right i'm going to wrap this video up i hope that answered a lot of your questions uh, we thank each and every one of you for following along with us on our journey and until next time thanks for watching and god bless